when we're speaking about work, energy, and power, uh, I'm going to start off actually with work itself. I like this. Uh, I actually saw this on a t-shirt once, you know, physicists do it with energy. Uh, I get it because we do everything with energy and then it sounds a little bit naughty. Anyway, uh, work itself. Well, let's actually look at this. This is an equation you get on your data booklet. So it's really important. And it goes like this. It goes work equals F S cos theta. Now, F is the force that's applied. S is the displacement, so that's in meters. And work itself, that is actually a scalar. That means it's not a vector. It, uh, it doesn't need direction. It's just a, a number. And the uh, theta, that's the angle between the force and the displacement. So this is the really key thing right here. This is so important. Uh, maybe I'll put a rectangle around it and say this. This is your work equation. Now, there's something called the work energy theorem, and it really says that work is energy. And that's actually uh, pretty obvious, I hope, because work is measured in joules, and so is energy. So work is a form of energy. So if you're going to do work on something or have work done against something, it means someone's expending energy or sort of giving energy somewhere. Um, work is really interesting because you can say that you know the work done, for example, um, if I'm going to hold my calculator here. I take my calculator and I hold it right now like this. Right now there's an applied force going upwards. Right? And right now there's no displacement, so of course no work. If I displace it upwards, like this, you see that my displacement is upwards, my applied force is upwards, so that means my angle between the two, uh, theta, is zero. And if cosine of zero, that's actually just one. So that's why in this case I have work done. I do work done against gravity. However, look at this special case. What if I take this calculator here and I walk with it? Let's say I walk to the side. Think carefully. The applied force to keep it from falling is still up. I know you think I have to apply a sideways force, but not really. I can be at constant motion. So what if I displace it sideways, but I apply a force upwards? Yes, I take this calculator and I walk that way. Have I done any work against gravity? No. And the reason not is because the angle between my applied force, in this case this way, and my displacement, in this case this way, uh, the angle between them is 90 degrees. Cos of 90 is zero. Therefore, there's no work done. So it's a little bit of a sneaky one with work done, but the angle is important. If they're 90 degrees to each other or zero degrees to each other. Then we've got energy. I'm going fast because these are just mainly definitions. They're still important, but uh, you know most people know them. So kinetic energy, that's the energy related to moving objects. So we can say E with the subscript K. And you're given this in your data booklet. It says it's half mv squared. Most people know this, don't they? So uh, that's that one there. That's energy. However, we have potential energy. I mean, most people know this one down here. Right? Most people know that the potential energy, EP, we could say, most people know that the potential energy, this is the simplistic version at least, is just mgh. That's the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. Uh, that one becomes a lot less important when you talk about gravitation and later on uh, later topics. When you look at all the stuff, especially if you do HL, and then you have gravitational potential energy, you basically define it, and this is just a special case of the general things. But in this case, just talking about Earth, fine, you can use mgh. Then you have an equation for the uh, potential energy of a spring. So you might need that at some point. So we'll put EP and it's half K delta X squared, I think. Let me just make sure that's the case. I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, yeah, that's it. So this is the case. So this one here is what you need for a spring. Remember what K is. K is a spring constant. Um, X is just a displacement from equilibrium. Now we have a total energy, and that one is actually really important as well. Uh, but the good news, it's super easy. Right? Total energy is just ET, we'll just say. It's just the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy in this case. So that would be the total energy here. And it's usually conserved, which means the total energy is constant. And that sometimes you can use that to solve questions. Oops, I've made this a lot worse, haven't I? I made it look a lot of, I was trying to make it look prettier, but I made it look worse. There we go. I'll just leave it like that. Um, so that I think is really important that the, the fact that energy is conserved is uh, really key here. So what, you, what that means is that you can use energy. If you can find the uh, total energy somewhere in the, in the reaction or in whatever is going on, then you know the total energy everywhere. You often use it for special cases like where the kinetic is zero, then you know the potential energy tells you the total energy because zero plus potential is the total.
Whereas, uh, by contrast, when it's the opposite, when there's no potential, it's all kinetic at some point in the motion, uh, then you can have it where the kinetic then tells you the total energy. For example, for the equations for simple harmonic motion for HL students, uh, they have that. That's how you can find the total energy of this spring. You just find it from the maximum kinetic energy because that max kinetic energy, potential energy is zero. So just so you can see, um, total energy is still really important in a lot of different topics. Power. Now, we use uh, this uh, word for power. Right? Oh, by the way, sorry, I didn't really mention. Uh, energy is measured in joules. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that anywhere, so I should probably put that here. Energy is, mentioned in, uh, is measured in joules. Let's put that in there. That's really important. So measure in joules. Important. Now we have uh, power. We use the letter P for power, capital P, by the way. And actually, the main equation you're actually supposed to use is this one. That the power is FV. So that's power, that's force times the velocity. By the way, did I define everything here? Yeah. Okay, good. So your power is your force times the velocity. Where the force is measured in, let's think about this. What will we measure force in? Hope you know, it's in newtons. Velocity is measured in meters per second. But power is a funny unit, it's called watts. That's why it's a really dumb joke, like, what's the unit of power? Ha <laughs> I guess you see that pun. Um, so yeah, the power is measured in watts. Uh, that's a really important one, so I'm just going to draw a little thing around this. So this is the one, if you want the power, multiply the force times the velocity, and you get the power in watts. However, I think there's an even more important equation. It's really worth knowing, okay? So I'm going to put this in, like, big stars here. Oops. Yeah, I'm going to put it maybe in red. Here we go. Another equation that's even, I think, even more important. Power is energy over time. Which is measured in joules, isn't it? Energy and time is measured in seconds. You could also say then, because of the work energy theorem from before, you could say it's the work done. Work in joules over time. In seconds and this equation comes in so much to help and save the day this equation shows up in pretty much any topic especially in um, talking about circuits you can do things like this uh, where you need this you especially need it where you talk about uh, power generation so it's another version it's still measured in watts but um, it's also in joules per second so this is how you convert from like something that looks really crazy with like electronic stuff. You know, like you say, oh, maybe, I don't know, you have a motor that lifts something up and it takes it this much time to lift it up. Then they say, uh, using that, what's the current? You're like, uh, what? How do I go from sort of, sort of mechanics to electricity? So if that's the case, I mean, this is really important here. Okay, so what you can do then with the, this equation, this allows you to mix and match between things because energy can be in any form. So if you can find the energy or you know something about the time, then you can get the power. And from the power, you can get other things. So this is a really key, really important equation for you.